this is the Last Strings Podcast. I'm Will Hitchens. This is Mitchell Ford. Um, we decided to come with a topic today because we don't have a guest and sort of just talk shit about um, <clears throat> what seems to be alcohol and travel. Um, Mitchell is looking the prospect of going traveling at the end of the year, I guess, at yep. the end of the year. And yeah, not too far off. So looking to do a tra- uh, trip to Southeast Asia for a while, mm-hmm. um, which includes a silent retreat and some other things like that. Um, and then potentially Europe sometime next year mm-hmm. to have a look around. I've never really had a gap year or an extended time off work. So I'm sort of between careers at the moment. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to, to spread my wings and have a look around. Um, particularly as you know, you and I have talked about how we probably want to take this to another level mm-hmm. in the future. And I feel like I need to travel to get it out of my system mm-hmm. so that I can come back good to go. Good yeah. To, good to start our venture and, and, and um, there's no more itch to scratch because it's been there for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think I'm going to take this opportunity to travel. Mm-hmm. But I'm concerned about, uh, yeah, obviously drinking again Mm -hmm. because um, staying in hostels and traveling throughout Europe and Asia can be very tempting, Yeah, especially Bali. It's dollar beers, all that kind of thing. Everyone else is doing it Mm -hmm. Um, and it's been on my mind a lot. So I thought it'd be great to have a chat about it because I'm sure I'm not the first person to to go through this. No, Um, that's, yeah, like, and especially just sort of, if it's yeah, depending on yeah, just because it's yeah, it's holidaying basically, and what do we do? We sort of unwind on holidays and sort of relax and leisure and you know seek a lot of comfort. I mean, there's not it's rare people go on holidays and then sort of they're grinding. I mean, you're doing a silent retreat, which I guess will be I guess part of it, but a lot of it is you know yeah, just trying to have a good time and have a break from your from your regular life, and then doing long forms of travel, which I've done in the past. I've done, I guess my last two overseas trips were between, I did four months in North America and I did four and a half months in Europe, um, which, yeah, we just, you know, I mean, the, the, the one to America was a, was a big sort of piss up. And then, I mean, my last one, my last my trip to Europe was, I guess, the last time I relapsed and all the sort of escapades that went with that. Um, so, yeah, like I haven't actually travelled, I mean, I guess because, you know, with the way the world went the last couple of years. Um, yeah, like I haven't travelled overseas since and it's certainly something that, you know, crosses my mind to want to go do it again but then with the sort of, with the intention to do it sober and sort of navigate how that would go, Um is not something, yeah, if it really had to address, really. And, um, but it could, yeah, I guess it is something that, yeah, like I would like to sort of travel again, especially sober because, yeah, like a lot of, I guess, you know, I did sort of see a lot of places, but because I was blind drunk a lot of the time, I don't really remember a lot from it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's, I don't want to live in fear either. And that's mm. kind of what you're saying. It's, <clears throat> we have this fear of, yeah, making a mistake, slipping up, drinking and, and making a mess of ourselves. But at the same time, I don't want to deprive myself of an experience to go travelling because of that fear. Mm-hmm. So I, like I said to you just before the before we started, is um, I've been thinking about it a lot and I'm at the point now where I just want to put it behind me mm-hmm. and just remember that in the moment it'll be just one day at a time as mm-hmm. it is now, just focusing on not drinking on that day mm-hmm. and not putting myself into a spin. Um, and I guess <clears throat> something that's driving the concern for a relapse or, a, you know, to, to, to slip up is I remember you saying that when you went to Europe, you'd been sober for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it sounds like you had a lot of fun over there. Um, so I suppose, can you talk us through your experience with your, your trip to Europe, mm-hmm. maybe your mindset before beforehand mm-hmm. and then how it all unfolded? Yeah, so I was, I'd left, so it was 2017, I left rehab, I did six weeks and then was sober for just over two years. 
And in that time, my focus was, I guess, getting my health and fitness sort of better, I guess, in check or sort of because that wasn't a, and then I, uh, I wanted to work and make money because I decided at some point I wanted to, tra- probably in the position you're in now, like I wanted to travel Europe. I'd never been to Europe, so I wanted to do that. All right. I had sort of a set money goal and then I just sort of worked most of the time doing that. And then, but what I didn't do was the whole, that probably that two years, I, I had very minimal little i guess minimal social interaction with people i mostly saw my parents i think like for the most part once every week um i had probably a handful of times i hung out with a couple of friends but for the most part i was on my own and at the time i thought that was fine i thought that well i've got these other goals this is what i'm focused on it's not going to be a priority for me at the moment so when I flew to, because basically, I, I mean, I flew to Dubai and then I flew to London. So I had a couple of days in Dubai. And because Dubai's, I mean, it's the United Arab Emirates, it's a Muslim country. So, but it's quite westernized. I mean, there's American fast food chains everywhere and it's sort of open to sort of Western tourism. So um, I guess I'd, the, the alcohol rules there, I'd, I think it's like, if it's in sort of designated areas, obviously there's no one drunk in the street and stuff. Um, but it never really crossed my mind because I was I was staying in a what was pretty much a I'm pretty sure it was like a, a like an apartment that was converted into a hostel in JBR and it was it was pretty shady and I didn't really like any of the people staying there. So I would just go out for the day and come back and sort of just be exhausted and just not really have any interest. But then when I got to London, I think the first I got into London late. Um, like at 8 p.m. or something, you know, and you travel, you're, you're traveling sort of across time zones and stuff and you're just a bit sort of, yeah, whatever. And so I checked in and then you get a drink card on arrival. I didn't think much of it. I was like, oh, I'm tired, I'll just go to bed. And then I got up the next morning and as I was about to go out for the day, two guys checking out come up to me and go, we didn't use our drink cards, do you want ours? And so now I have three. So there's a little bit of in, in, you know, sort of like, okay, right, well, I'm going to go out for the day and try and not sort of think about it, I guess, as we say. And I sort of went out for the day and then um, sort of explored around London, never been never been there before. So then I guess, I guess it came sometime in the, the afternoon and then I was in, I guess, come back to my hostel room and two American girls checked in and started chatting away. It's just like, oh, they're pretty cute. And... It came up, you know, like, oh, we'll go to the bar later this evening and have a drink together. And again, it was just like, oh, shit. Like, what I hadn't done was, which I believe now is the core sort of issue uh, with my relapse, is the fact that I didn't put myself in social environments with alcohol and just get uncomfortable with it and just, you know, be comfortable in those settings. And then if... It, the op- if the option came up where someone was going to offer me alcohol, I was going to be able to say no because that was always my biggest fear was just that someone would offer it to me and I wouldn't be able to say no because that's how I started. It was peer pressure. I was peer pressured. And I get you know it's not an excuse, but essentially I got sick of it and just that was that was um, how I started. So mm. and then this it just started like this thought just started ruminating in my head that like it's going to happen. It's going to ha- like you, yeah. you're going to. Um, you're going to drink and I remember sort of going after the walking walking around somewhere in London in the afternoon and then I came back in the evening and then I think I just wandered down to the bar and just handed the drink it was just a pot of beer as a you know free drinks and as a yeah it's so then I I just sat it in front I guess I can't really remember like I just sat it in front of me and then I just drank it and it was just like okay You've done it now. Yep. And there was no sort of consider. There was no sort of like, well, you don't have to continue. It was just all right. Well, we, we've done it now. There's two years of sobriety down the drain. Let's just go for it. And the f- you know, so then I had the rest of the drink drink vouchers, and then just got pissed that night. And I don't remember it being um, like it was fine. So then, you know, nothing drastic happened. So then those thoughts again happen where you're like, well, this was okay. Maybe it'll be different this time. And as the journey 
throughout Europe progressed, I mean, very quickly, what I was thinking about yesterday, like it went pear-shaped pretty quickly. Um, like, I guess after a couple of weeks, like I was, was it after London, then I sort of wound up in, sort of wandered up England and then wound up in Scotland. It was at the, I was in Edinburgh and then like the Fringe Festival was on. So I was just sort of, sort of a madhouse out in Edinburgh, like people everywhere, sort of was people having a good time with lots of different things going on. I was staying in a hostel like across the road from the train station. I remember going out one night just, yeah, just blackout drunk and waking up fully clothed in my hostel bed and I'd shit myself. <laughs> oh, my God. Like just, yeah, I think I'm pretty sure I had like every, like, even my shoes on and everything. Like, And I was in like a triple bunk bed. So I was in the middle. Oh. So I, And it was, like a, it was like a hostel room with like 12 people. Shit sandwich. And, yeah. So, <laughs> um, and I can't, yeah, like I remember trying to sort of clean... I guess whether it was to clean myself up after I'd like in the, cause in the little room, like there was a bathroom, but I was like, how did I not wake any of these people up? Like I'm just causing nonsense. And I remember like going out into like the hallway to where I guess there was like a bigger bathroom, I guess like a common room bathroom or something. And then just everything I was wearing, I just threw out. Yep. And then I even threw out the hostel linen. Like mm. it was just let's just get rid of all the evidence that this ever. Be occurred. nice of you. I'm sure the cleaning staff at that hostel <laughs> would have would have actually appreciated that. No, yeah, I mean I've had episodes. I mean on a on a trip, you know the the trip I did in North America, there was there was a few occasions where I'd thrown up all over the fucking the bed in the hostel and then just moved to another hostel bed and passed out and then just left the yeah. the the mess there. But this this. This was this was the first time this ever happened. I'd never like I've vomited, I've pissed myself. I'd never shit myself before, and I was just like, like this was just like fucking hell, mate. Like new record. This this was like punching through another sort of rock bottom moment, <laughs> you know. And um, I wish I could say that that was it, but yeah. Um, so I remember, yeah, I remember like pulling, and then I remember getting the um, like the. Like obviously, when people check out, the dirty linens left on the, the bed, and so they take it and then put new linen on. So I didn't have any linen on my bed, so I just took the linen off, the clean linen off, like the top bunk, and just put it on mine. And the guy comes back and he's just like, "Why did you do? Why did you take? Why did you take it off?" And I was just, I didn't want to talk. I was just like hung over and just ashamed of myself. Just like, oh, duh, you know. And he's just like, "What the fucks? What the fucks wrong with this guy?" So then, what would happen would be then there'd be a few days of me just like you know, simmering in my own sort of guilt and shame and embarrassment of what happened and then that would pass and then you just think, oh, well, you know, that happened, but, you know, it's going to be all right. We'll just, you know, next town, reset. You know, that was a part of I quite liked travelling was the fact that you, you just start all over again and you just go to a new city, you, nobody knows who you are and that's kind of with the relapse itself was that I was on the other side of the world and no one knew what was going on back home. Because I didn't talk to anyone back home that this happened. Um, so then I, I think I eventually got to like Cardiff in Wales. It was just like new t new city. There was an, there was an Aussie bar down the road from where I was staying, so I frequented that a bit. And then, you know, and this is, I think, I don't know. I mean, the incident in Edinburgh would probably would have been like a week or so in, like probably just maybe a couple of weeks into my trip, and then. In Cardiff one night, went to this Aussie bar and then met this, um, I don't know, started talking to some girls and just met this, I don't really, yeah, like I just, it was just another blackout and I don't really remember. I think I, I've got like a flashback of like going down on it. Like that's like winding up. Um, at, least you had, at least you had the common decency to <laughs> bit of foreplay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, for what was to come. So then... Well, the next thing I remember was waking up in a hotel room. I didn't know where I was. I was in a hotel. This woman was next to me. I was in a bed. I was naked. I can't remember if the co the cover was on me or not, but I've but what I've come to sort of discover was that I've shit myself again and I've shat through this entire bed and I was just cut like I was just shit all over me and it was just I was basically caught brown handed, I guess, and not um, <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah, so then, I mean, I was still drunk and then trying to 
just clean myself up in the bathroom and then she's woken up and she's just like what the fuck has happened in here like she's just in shock and I'm still stammering around just trying to clean whatever's sort of um left of I mean I don't know like I'm just in sort of a state of just like I'm fucked like this is just the worst like this and yeah like this is one of the worst things that's ever happened I guess yeah and I then stumbled I guess whatever got myself together I stumbled out of this apartment went downstairs went to reception there's a guy on it was this and also this was like six o'clock in the morning and I've gone up to them still drunk going trying to get her another room and the guy's like it's like six o'clock in the morning and the hotel's booked out what what do you mean and I think she I think I remember she must she must have rung down and sort of said that there's a fucking (laughs) I don't know what she described to this guy on the phone but I just paid like a a cleaning fee of I don't know it was like a hundred pounds or something and I just bailed I didn't go back up didn't fucking um say anything like I didn't go back up and see her and then again that was just like it's just like another rock bottom moment yeah. of just like this is just like this isn't working um yeah you're just getting into more and more literal shit literal shit literal yeah. shit and so yeah and for that to yeah like I guess for those things to happen and I mean this was yeah like a couple of weeks into my trip and I was really down on myself for that time and I just, yeah, I was just trying to sort of get myself together. But then what happened next is kind of where I sort of see this as like sort of, it's like addiction is like a roller coaster. Like it has ups and downs and um, I, it, I ended up in Cardiff and it was the end of Pride weekend, I guess. So like, yeah, there was a lot of sort of celebrating going along with the... Um, I guess with the gay and lesbian community. And then these two gay Welsh guys checked in to the hostel and they were from the neighboring town and it was cheaper for them to stay in the hostel than it was to catch a cab back to their, I guess where they lived. And, you know, we sort of chatted here and there. They showed me jammy dodgers, which is a sort of English sort of biscuit or something. And, you know, they're going, Oh, we're going to go out tonight. Do you want to come? And I was already just sort of like, I'm not going to, um, yeah, I was just like, no, this, yeah. this is this is my attempt to try and stop. It was just like, nah. I'm, I think I played chess with some French bloke in the lobby, and then I was going to go to bed. But I'd made mention of a this hike that I'd heard of someone doing called Penavan, which is outside of Cardiff. And one of these guys just says to me, oh, "I'll take you tomorrow. That's fine. It's all good." So then I was like, "All right, well, all right. Well, why not? Let's just go out with them and we'll see what happens." And then. I ended up having like one of the best nights of my trip. Like it was yeah. just, um, you know, the f- we went to one place and one one of them offered me a drink and yeah, I took it. And then, but yeah, like the rest of the night was really fun. You know, you go out with gay guys, like, I mean, they party on a whole different level and it's, you know, and they're, they're out for a good time. And I mean, we're in a lot of gay clubs and, um, you know, and this place we went to, it was like a Canon foam party. So there was just, this cannon that was shooting foam and there's just, I mean, there's shirtless dudes everywhere, but I mean, I think I picked up some chick in there that night and it was just, it was like a really good time. And then the next day, you know, we sort of got ourselves together and then he, he drove us, one of them drove me and the other guy he was with, drove him back home and then me and him went out and did this hike in Penavan and, it, you know, it was outside of Cardiff, like, and yeah, it was one of the highlights of my trip. So... There was a thought for me where it was just like, well, would you would you've experienced that had you not have gone out with these guys and you know gotten the piss with them? And I guess the answer is, well, I didn't try. Yeah. You know, it it was I guess another excuse of just well, you know, you have to put yourself in these situations in order for the possibility of oh well, you had some of these and that's what I like these experiences and that's where a lot of them it's just you know life is some sort of adventure yeah when you're drinking. Yeah, for sure. And I think for a lot of people who don't have the issues that I guess I did with it, where they're just like, you know, you've just described some of the, some horrific shit that's happened to you and you're pissed and yet you still drank. Like, mm. And it's because it's not all bad. Yeah, well, that's right. Otherwise, you wouldn't keep doing it. Yeah. And I suppose you've got, yeah, you had that experience and you've had your highs and your lows. You wouldn't have been the only one that's been to Europe and, and carried on like that. I remember, no. you, I remember you saying um, there were some guys you met in, was it Oktoberfest? 
Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that was later in the trip. Like, so okay. it didn't. So I mean, this has already happened, and this is like within the first month I was over there. Okay. So you more really... sh- more shit kept happening. Yeah. Okay. As it went along, and yeah. um, yeah, like it's not all bad. It's just bad enough. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It, yeah. I can completely understand. Like, you'd feel a lot of shame, a lot of regret and embarrassment mm. around those kind of incidents. Yeah. So I mean, we, I mean, like I sort of was in Wales, like I, was in, I went to Wales and I went to Ireland and then went to Paris and then went up in Amsterdam. And I mean, Amsterdam was because, you know, pot is legal there. I didn't partake any mushrooms, but I smoked a lot of pot and drank. So I was just essentially fuck-eyed for the whole time I was there. You know, I mean, I had it, I'd wander around the red light district, which is very, you know, as a drunk, lonely, vulnerable single guy, don't fucking because you'll get these women looking at you like no woman would ever look at you like these women would never look at you any other day but just you know like these window girls that you know they're prostitutes and they're just they're just wave you know come on in sort of thing which i did once and couldn't get enough couldn't get an erection anyway so it was just a complete waste of money um but i had another night where there's a lot of drinking a lot of pot and um I don't know. I wound up with some some chick and then went back to their apart like her apartment. And I remember sort of I can't remember sort of getting into bed, but then having to go to the toilet and throwing up, getting back into bed, getting up again, throwing up. And it's I had some rational thought there where I just decided, yeah, this is this is this isn't going to go well. So I just sort of said to her, look, I'm going to go, and she's just like, yeah, good. So I, which yeah, so then I left, and because. The way I traveled, like I didn't have like a working SIM card. Oh, you mostly used Wi-Fi, but I had an offline maps that like you, da- you download the maps of the city into your phone. So I was navigating with that. I stumbled, I managed to make it to the street where my hostel was at. And then all I, like, I remember I've, I've just passed out in the street. Like I've just, just woken up sort of in a garden bed or something and then sort of stumbled back to my hostel room, fallen asleep, woken up the next day and my phone's gone. So, and then the only thing that, that, I mean, that, that hit me again, but the only thing that kind of an upset, I guess, pissed me off the most and was the fact that I didn't back up any of my videos or any of my photos from that trip up at that point. So all that was gone. So then, I mean, that, at that point, and I mean, this is probably, yeah, just over a month into the trip, like I was considering going home. I was considering just like, you're, this is, this is not panning out very well. Like you're you're out of control and you have you don't have any sort of grasp on yeah and yeah like, i mean i hadn't spoken yeah like i hadn't spoken to anyone back home of what was going on so it was just it got really tough and but yeah like i guess i just sort of i mean i bought another phone and then just sort of again it would just be i drink to excess or fuck up to excess and then just fuck up and then stay low for a bit and then it's just like oh it's okay now and then just go back to it and then the story you're referring to was when i went up in berlin and then met these i met these two other guys from they were australian but they lived in london and they just come from oktoberfest and i was telling them yeah you know i got wasted in amsterdam lost my phone and these guys like oh fuck i've lost three phones on this trip and <laughs> fucking like they were still paying for phones that they've already lost like they're on plans and you know, this guy got wasted in Oktoberfest and lost his passport, lost his bank cards. It was, and they were still, they were just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> keep rolling. Just keep rolling. Just get on with it. It was just, you know, and that was, it was kind of like a, oh, okay. It's, there's other people who go through this stuff. So it's not as bad, but it's, you know, it's still not good. <laughs> do you think, do you think maybe, uh, a reason that you had so much shame was you were being fairly hard on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's something that I still um, have issue with today and it's stuff I guess I'm trying to work on and I've, I've struggled with lately. Yeah, like I am incredibly hard on myself. Yeah. Yeah, because I had a chat with one of our friends recently um, about yeah about my, myself traveling in uh, in Europe and Asia and, and the, the thing I'm worried about drinking and he was in a very similar situation to me where he was like 
partying really hard in the footy scene. And then, yeah, kind of went nuts overseas. Um, and then he mentioned that nowadays he does drink here and there. But the, the difference between now and then is he's got a, he's a, he's a lot easier on himself. And mm. because of that, he doesn't feel the need to drink as much. Mm. And he's built that self-love. And now he doesn't. And so if he does, I mean, maybe not shit the bed. <laughs> that's a pretty <laughs> that's a pretty Olympic effort. But yeah. if, you know, but if you but if you get a bit silly and lose your phone or something like that, being softer on yourself, you know, it might not be such a harrowing experience. Yeah. Um. Not to not to encourage that you just fucking forgive yourself for for everything. But but I guess it's just a point like a, a different point of view is that. Um, that yeah, I mean, a lot of people would be listening to this that might have been here and go, that, "Man, that's not that bad." Yeah, you know what you did wasn't that bad. Plenty of people do this shit. Yeah, well, I mean, hearing, yeah, I remember like I, that that having a black blackout during a one night stand and shitting the bed in, not in your bed, but someone else. I mean, it was a hotel room bed, but it wasn't my apartment uh, where I was staying. Um, was yeah, like I didn't tell anyone that for. It was only until. Um, I was at some group and then some guy shared like, yeah, you know, I've, I've been pissed before and shit the bed. And then even like meeting other people that we've even interviewed and chatted to, it's like, oh yeah, I've shit the bed before as well. It was just like, oh, so it is not, yeah, like commonality. I mean, even, I think even if I went, to, went back to AA meetings, I mean, it'd be the same thing. People are just like, yeah, what else is it like that, that can happen? What else so, is new? Yeah. So, but yeah, like the rest of the, I guess, I guess my the rest of the escapades in Europe. I mean, it was a lot of just yeah, just excessive drinking and um, just yeah, just because that was just what was well. That's what I did, and you know I can remember a week in Budapest, which is quite a notorious party city. I mean, I mean some of these hostels where they were just nuts, and you know we the first night I think we went on a boat party where you pay whatever the. Um, I don't know. I can't remember how much it was, but it, you know, because Hungary's not on, they're not on the euro. They got their, they're still on their own currency, so like the exchange rate was pretty good. And it's like unlimited beer and wine, and you're just on the Danube, which is the one of the main rivers in Europe that goes through a few countries, and you just get absolutely just ridden off. And like I did that for a week, and by the end of it, like I, my my organs and everything were just yeah. were just inflamed and just like shutting down, um, and the way I was trying to deal with that was the only way I knew how to deal with anything, which was to drink. So yeah. I was drinking to deal with issues that were being caused by the alcohol that I was putting in. Yeah. And then I was, and then again, then I like moved to another city. It's like reset. So I went to like, I went to the capital of Croatia and just had a couple of days, not in a hostel, just on my own, just didn't do, just had a couple of days just to myself, just to sort of recharge or sort of, about just like this this roller coaster is fucking oh boy it's just taking a lot of me and then i'd go to the next town split be in a hostel and then it'd just be the same thing again just like oh do you want to come out for a drink it's just like yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah and the the takeaway i mean because i was thinking about it yesterday it's just like there's a lot like i went to 17 countries in four and a half months and you know i was over there for four and a half months and yeah like a lot of it's a blur and it's kind of just, you know, like I remember meeting this 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 guy in um, Slovenia, and we we linked up again in Rome, and he relayed to me. And later on, like after like uh, after the trip had ended, and we chatted here and there post trip, he relayed this story to me about us hanging out in Rome with a couple of other people. We went to the Colosseum, and he's like, "Oh, that was like one of the highlights of my trip," and he was relaying me this, this, and this. I don't, I don't really remember much of it. And we were drunk during the day. I mean, because I remember going to the Coliseum sort of in the afternoon. I've got pictures of it. Of it yeah, but yeah, like it's all just, it's it's not there. And it's kind of just like, what was the point of all that? Like if you're not going to have those memories. Yeah, well, and, I suppose it goes back to that drink to remember, not drink to forget. Yeah. We've talked about that a bit. It's a good yeah. saying. And yeah, it sounds like you were drinking to forget for most of your European tour. And you said before you you kind of sad about it. You had some time. Mm. Uh, bush yesterday and you you know you put your phone away and had some time in your head and yeah you said that you you felt pretty low that yeah you had forgotten so much of the trip yeah i mean there's a lot of yeah i mean a lot of my travels yeah where i can say yeah i've been to all these places but yeah a lot of it 
just revolved around drinking mm. like i mean there were bits and pieces here well i did do this and this and um and there's some memories that i have but yeah a lot of it is just wrapped up in um either either drinking or i mean yeah i mean i took i mean i, I mean i did have an epiphany when i took cocaine in prague to it put like the come down from from that was just that awful that it put me off ever doing that again mm. <laughs> So there was something. <laughs> well, yeah, look, you learn. Yeah. You learn something. Um, and yeah, so I mean, I remember like, because I was just thinking about it yesterday, like I remember being these final sort of days in Rome where I was getting to the point of like, are you going to, like it's four and a half months. You, you just mentally, I was mentally exhausted. I was just, I mean, I was staying in like a, like a set, like a part, I was staying in a hostel and the room was like several stories up. And it had an open window and it's just, it was that miserable. And I was just like, well, you could just drive head first out the fucking window, you know. I remember sort of sitting there and crying on my own, just been like, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what, what, what is this, um, what has this come to? You know, you, you get to, you're doing like a trip of a lifetime and you're just, you know, out of control, um, piss head. So if yeah. you could do things differently... What would you have done? Well, I guess what I've done now is, and it's kind of what I learned. I mean, I kind of what I was when I got sober again, and then I started sort of hanging around people, and I was just like, well, you know, you avoided social interaction for two years, and you still relapsed. Like, you're gonna have to. Why not do the opposite and just dive headfirst into it and see what happens. And yeah, like it was really uncomfortable at first. Um, and sometimes I do get uncomfortable, but more or less now it's got, it's not really alcohol related. Like once I sort of first did it, it was like, oh, you can do this. You don't really need alcohol anymore. I mean, I, I mean, it wasn't a useful tool for me to begin with, mm. but um, it, what, like, and that's kind of where my mindset is now where it's just like, well, because I've just taken it off the table entirely and it's just like, well, if I was to go traveling again, that's what I would have to be. It's just like, okay, well, you're not going to drink. You're probably, yeah, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to take dr drugs because I'm just kind of like, um, or at least, yeah, not sort of like party drugs. I mean, we could go into sort of the possibility of sort of exp mind expanding drugs like DMT or mushrooms is yeah. is that but um yeah like I don't want to take anything that is to to make to let me ex escape I guess yeah that's, that's exactly what I used right. it for yeah, yeah that's like, what I was gonna say is depends why are you drinking why are you taking drugs why are you taking mushrooms mm. you know, ask the question why be a detective of your own mind. Mm. If you if you go on a Europe, like yeah, why are you drinking? If you don't want it to socialize, and you know you can you can keep a rein on it, then it's probably okay for some people. Yeah, obviously not everyone, but um, but yeah, and I think it's the same as taking mushrooms. You know, you mm. can you start taking mushrooms every day to escape. Well, yeah, okay, you might not <laughs> shit the bed, but yeah, yeah, but you know you're still virtually doing the same thing. Mm. You're, you're escaping your own mind. Yeah, and that's yeah, and I mean where we've had conversations with people recently where um, they've done all this inner work, they've, they've done all this work on trauma and healing and where they have now a completely different relationship with drinking and they, you know, after some time have reintroduced it back into their lives with a different sort of um, intention with it, you know. And I guess that's something that we, after having those conversations with those people, we've sort of discussed, well, is that something that we could do? Me personally, I don't want to open the box. I don't want to open Pandora's box. Like, yep. I have a lot of fear because I just, I guess I know me, like I just don't think I could just, yeah, just sit and have one because I never did. Yeah. So Yeah, that's, and that's fine. Mm. And that's understandable. Um, it's, it's safer not to. Yeah. It's safer not to. And I certainly wouldn't do, like I'm interested in doing some sort of work like that if it will help me grow and become i guess a better person and be more happy and content within myself because it's something that i still struggle with to be especially with the self-love talk like i don't really give myself any of that 
Yep. And it's hard for me to receive love because, yeah, there's ultimately parts of me that just doesn't feel like I deserve it. So I would do it for that reason. I wouldn't do it for the reason where... So I could drink again. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be a byproduct. Yeah. That would be a, that would be something that may or may not happen down the track if you were if you were ready for that. I know what you mean. Yeah. And we've talked about that. Yeah, it's not with the intention to drink again. Mm. I guess for me, a lot of the internal stuff around drinking overseas is um, I have this feeling that when I'm um, when I see other people my age drinking. I get these stories in my own head about how I'm a loser mm. and I don't fit in. You know, there's all these other people your age drinking, socializing, having a good time overseas and you're and, and you can't do that, you know. And you've talked about before that you can still have the experience that they're having whether they're sitting at a bar, you mm. can still have that experience. But for some reason in my mind, even though I haven't even been yet, I'm my mind is already mm. playing these stories, you know, I'm already yeah. creating these situations. I haven't like I'm fucking at least six months away. Like, you mm-hmm. know, it's just it's how the brain works. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that's what really puts a lot of fear in me because I don't know how long I could put up with that feeling for. Mm-hmm. I don't know how long because, um, yeah, during my during my childhood, I had a, a, probably one of the recurring themes was I was often socially isolated mm-hmm. and I was often didn't have a lot of friends, um, titled a, a weirdo, a loser, that kind of thing. And so as an adult, when I'm exposed to those same or it, or if I at least perceive myself as a weirdo or a loser it's very it's very sensitive to me mm-hmm. you know and um and I guess yeah my biggest fear is how long can I can I put up with that feeling and and whether um and whether I can withstand it for the entirety of the trip um and so now I'm playing all these like scenarios in my head mm-hmm. about whether I should um you know, whether I should go at all, should I just stay home, not travel, deprive yeah. myself of the experience for the sake of my sobriety? Mm. Do I go and just go head first and you know, if I feel like a loser, I just have to find other places to hang out, other things to do? Or, you know, is it is it a possibility that I'm gonna drink again? Mm. And that's kind of what's going through through my head. And I thought yeah. that's why it'd be really good to to talk to you about that, because obviously you've already had the experience of of heading over there and yeah, and I guess the feelings that you're talking about happen pretty... I mean, for me, I didn't give any thought of it before I went. Or I had, I did have thoughts. I think you're going to... Like, I'd have thoughts sort of here and there. It's just like, you're probably going to drink again. But then I just sort of, you know, it's just like, well, we're not there yet. Yeah. But, I mean, it, the feelings that you're describing happen pretty instantly as soon as I got that... Probably that first morning in London or during that first day. Um and then, yeah, they just, like I said, they just build up and then it just becomes this unbearable sort of um, thing. And I guess there's a lot of the stuff where we're learning sort of how to process your emotions and process what you're feeling and stuff. And, um, yeah, like, I don't see my relapse now as a bad thing. I mean, it was, it was, it was all over the place, but I just see it now as just a, it was just one last look through that door. It was just yeah. one last sort of this, just a reminder of just like this is what it's going to be like if you want to go back out there again. Yeah, like it's not going to be any different. And how much lower can you go? Like it, I think it, I think it's probably just a stair. It's just a door, just like a staircase. Just <laughs> like I just don't think it's and yeah. I mean, how you know, it's it's Russian roulette. You know, just like am I just going to drop dead of you know, alcohol, alcohol poisoning or something at some point, or am I going to do something stupid and just, you yeah. know, it, like it is a possibility. I mean, they, I think the statistics, because the statistics for people who go to rehab and then stay sober for the rest of their lives after going to rehab is like 5% or something I've heard. So, which can be discouraging for people who are looking to sort of, quits like oh well if i go to rehab i only have a five percent chance of staying sober it's just like well i'm i'd be one of those 95 percent of people that went to rehab and still relapsed after but i've only done it once so and like i'm where i'm at now like yeah like i know that i have to stay sober and i'd rather stay sober and i think that um that's like i mean i'd sort of 
you know, or five percent. Oh well, there's no point. It's just like no, we'll just focus on you. Just like, <laughs> and yeah, like how you've sort of said is just like you know, be easy on yourself. Um, yeah, that it it can happen, but you can always try again. And certainly, yeah. I think when I when I eventually stopped again, and then I guess I never really had sort of. It was never just oh well. I had two years, uh, it all doesn't matter anymore. Like I could be five years sober today, but I'm not. I'm two and, about two yeah. and a half. But it just it was just, let's just stop today and then just, yeah, just a day at a time as, as where we've got to now. Um, yeah. A friend of mine I spoke to yesterday had something really interesting to say around this. I hadn't spoken to her in actually a, a, a long while, like a number of years, and she she'd travelled Europe and... Um, other parts of the world and I gave her an update on where I'm at um, on every on everything that I've been doing and and my fears around drinking overseas and um, she sort of asked what 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 are you really worried about of drinking in Europe like what what's the fear and I said the fear is I'm undoing all my hard work which mm. is kind of what you're talking about is yeah that you'd had two years in the bank and then it feels like you start again. Mm-hmm. And she kind of whimsically just said, well, that's just your ego getting in the way. Like, because a number resets. Like she said, I can see how you're rationalizing it, that it's like you're resetting. Mm. But I feel like you having like two years of sobriety and relapsing, that you've still done a, a lot of work, mm. you know, and, and I don't think it is wasted mm. because in that two years, you've done a lot of inner work. And yeah. And I think ultimately, um, I just found what she said really interesting in the mm. way that she put it. I hadn't really considered that before. That, um, I mean, for me, it would be, yeah, am I going to undo all my hard work? Am I going to come back and, and be in the old habits again? Mm. That, that's my fear. Yeah. But I'd, I will, um, you know, if, if something happens and I slip up along the way, I guess... I can't discredit the last no. period and how much work that I've done. Mm. Um, and so I don't, you know, after considering that and after what she said, I don't think you relapsing, you know, I don't think you undid undid your hard work. No, I think that, yeah, I, like I said, it was just sort of a, it was just one last sort of reminder of sort of what it, what it's most likely, what it is going to be. I should yeah. say I shouldn't say what it could be. It's just like no, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be, it's just going to be a wild ride, and I guess there was a time where I I was attracted to the chaos of it all. Um, part of it I felt made thought it made me interesting. I had all these bizarre stories and escapades, um, you know, which is you know oh yeah it's funny it's entertaining but I mean some of the stuff I shared today like it was during it was just not funny at all and some of it I just carried for a long time like I don't um I mean to the point where like <laughs> the chicken whales like I, re- I remember what town she was from in Australia like she was Australian and I'm just like I'm never going to that town <laughs> <laughs> yep avoid yeah so yeah I guess to sort of wrap up a little bit is um well, I guess I'd just like to say to any of the listeners, if anyone listening has done travel sober um, and has any insight on this, feel free to feel free to message us in mm-hmm. and let us know what kind of experience you had because it's um I mean it's something that's been on my mind a lot lately mm. about um, yeah why do we why do we drink when we go on holiday mm. why is it why is there such a big drinking culture over in Europe. Um, or is that just my perception because all the people in my circle drink? Yeah. Maybe there's plenty to do sober, but I just yeah. don't know because all the people I'm talking to are all drinkers. So. Yeah. I mean, you could be, I mean, that's the thing. You could meet people in hostels who don't drink. I mean, there'll be the circles, circles of people who sort of, um, who probably will be getting into the drinking because um, that's, yeah, just it's the norm. You know, you're traveling around the world, you're in, you're in, hostels with people that are all doing the same thing you're doing they're from all different parts of the world 
and they're looking for a good time and that's yeah one way to sort of unwind and sort of yeah break the ice is just a bit of liquid courage and then just sort of mingle for, for, uh, for a bit um i do recall like i remember being in prague and there were some people in there that didn't drink but i mean i didn't sort of associate with them and certainly i just think even just from being back home and sort of going out and socializing sober you just want you just have different priorities it's just like i don't want to be out of the club till mid i mean i mean i was in berlin and you go into these clubs and they wouldn't open till midnight and i'm already just like I want to go to bed. Like, why am I <laughs> staying up for it? Just some weird fucking nightclub in Germany. Um, and yeah, it was. Um, and that's. I mean, like, it's something that I'll have to visit when I go overseas again. Because um, I, I mean, I'd go back to Europe in a heartbeat, and you know, with maybe find my phone back over there somewhere. But um, <laughs> like, do a lot of the sort of the play. I guess actually take in and do probably a lot of different things because i just think you'd have different sort of priorities and different sort of things that you would want to do yeah um and plus you'll save a ton of money yeah it's always one thing and i think a lot of the places i went to i probably didn't have to stay as long there because i was dealing with hangovers and whatever sort of shit shit mess that i've put myself in so there was a lot of places where i probably didn't like i probably didn't need to stay and i probably didn't do anything for a couple of days because i was just that hung over right yeah like i was just not in a good headspace to want to do anything and you know you could sort of hop around sort of a lot a lot quicker i guess and sort of yeah but depending on what you sort of what sort of your travel goals are yeah i mean my my travel goals are to because i actually wrote this down i so i did an exercise the other day I got a notebook out and at the top of the page I asked myself the question why why do I want to go traveling and I think the answer was something along the lines of it's to meet new people and to experience the world mm. um, in my mind I don't really have anywhere in particular that I want to go I just want to meet other people and hear that what their life stories are like mm. um, go to different countries see what they see how every the rest of the world lives mm. it's kind of the main reason and then I kind of did an exercise where I'd write write the answer and then below that I'd write why and then answer like, well, why do I want to go and, and meet all these people? Mm. And then sort of did that exercise until I got to to um, got to the baseline of, um, which was funnily enough, because I was um, deprived of a lot of socialising as a child. Mm. That was kind of the end result yeah. of like why I want to do this whole thing mm. and so to me it's really important to to have this experience mm. to feel that I've um, fulfilled something that I was deprived of mm -hmm. when I was younger yeah yeah and I think it's yeah like if you got the opportunity to do it do it um, I think you don't have to do it the way that I did it it's probably better if you don't do it the way I did it you probably save a lot of money probably save a lot of heartache probably save a lot of bed linen as, apparently as well um yeah it because it is i mean yeah, it's like there's a whole big world out there of just different cultures different yeah. sort of everything like and it's it expands your horizons you become sort of like i mean even like where we live here it's just like you go to all sorts of different places in the world and you're just like oh wow like yeah, i guess we got it pretty good here in some areas and in other areas that i mean like it's pretty good like certainly i mean that's why i just i mean i loved about europe was especially having like a u-rail pass which is the train pass where you can just hop on trains and just go wherever and you know the, the idea especially being an australian to hop on a train for a couple of hours and you're in a completely different country with a different language with a different culture you know here you're, you you go anywhere for a couple of hours you haven't left the state yeah. <laughs> that's um um and but yeah it's it is i guess it is just yeah for yourself and yeah it would be something that i'd have to sort of it's something that i haven't done i haven't yet gone overseas traveling i've been on trips solo here like i did a trip up north um at the end of last year or like over christmas break and yeah that social aspect was lacking but i was kind of still in that sort of um 
limited social sort of um, interaction. Just be, yeah, because I guess that was just a big thing. Because it's like, well, the only places I knew where to meet people was in those environments. Um, and then I guess maybe now being in the communities that we're in, it's kind of sort of, all right, well, I've got some sort of confidence and some sort of social exposure that I could probably sort of step back into those environments if, if need be. And I think hostels are kind of sort of, you know, especially if they're set up right, you just meet people in common rooms and just start conversations and stuff. Um, because yeah, everyone's sort of, if it's every if, if there's lots of sort of solo travellers, it's just like, oh, you're kind of forcing yourself. You got to force yourself to sort of start mingling with people. Um, yeah. Because yeah, you'll get that sort of, I guess that ick for just feeling a bit lonely, even though that yeah, you can be surrounded by people. Yeah, yeah. I guess I feel like I would love to stay sober for the trip because I think. It, I'd be able to travel a lot longer and I'll be clear headed, mm -hmm. save myself from, uh, from sh I guess, yeah, any shame or minimize any shame that I might experience from, mm -hmm. from mistakes that I make. And I can also spend the time um, processing some of these feelings that I have. Like if I do feel like a, like a loser, I can take time to actually look within and, and it'd be a really good opportunity without distraction to, um, to work through that mm. so and my intention is to just take it as we do now one day at a time mm -hmm. and uh i'm i'm not i'm i'm trying to avoid being anxious about it because i'm just punishing myself for something that yeah. hasn't that hasn't happened yet yeah you know? and like there's there's every chance that i will go through without a drink and have a great time and come back and mm. you know we'll be sitting here afterwards and saying yeah it was great you know, yeah. it was it was quite easy in the end, and I got used to it. Mm. But of course, the mind likes to play that negative worst case scenario, and, and I'm just trying to stop my my brain from doing that. Yeah, just yeah. catching you when your brain does that, yeah. catastrophizing everything. That's it. Yeah, yeah, where we sort of think, oh, you know, oh, what if I do drink? Oh, it's going to be the end of the world. That's right. What if you don't? Yeah, well, exactly. What if what if things actually go how, the yeah. way you want them to? Yeah. yeah. What if you you actually just implement and practice? Yeah, I don't drink. Yeah with people and then you meet people who you know i guess that's out of your control but you can meet people who respect your boundaries and don't push it i mean because that was always a fear of mine was just i was just going to be egged on to do it yeah and then but in that process of me believing that i was going to be egged on to do it i drank anyway on my own accord it never i was never egged on like yeah. i just convinced myself so that's kind of what we sort of like, like how the mind plays funny buggers yeah and sort of Dick can dictate you in the wrong, wrong direction. Yeah. Um, a lot. Yeah. Well, great. Great catch up, Will. It's always a pleasure, Mr. Ford. There's <laughs> <laughs> a, it's a juicy story there. Um, yeah. Oh, that's bits of it, I think. From I mean, I think that was, that's probably like the highlight reel. Yeah. Um, I mean, because, yeah, I mean, there was plenty of different countries. I mean, yeah, I was trying to think of other... I mean, like, oh yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's bits and pieces of other things throughout that trip, uh, but those are probably, like, which is kind of sad that those are the standout bits of my trip, besides, like, hiking, like, Penavan or, like, even going through hikes in Ireland, which are pretty cool, but, yeah, the highlights of my trip are probably some of the worst moments of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's what the mind tends to do, you know, like, we don't, all, the memories that linger in the brain are the negative ones. Yeah. You know, like positive memories don't seem to hang around as long. Mm. I think it's, it, I think it stemmed from, um, because your brain stores those memories to stop you from doing it again mm. and to say, like to stop those negative experiences again. So mm. that's why you remember when the positive experiences, well, that's no good to the brain. Yeah. Cause the brain's focus is on survival, getting you, you know, it's not, it's not, um, I don't think it's centered around, having a positive experience, it's just trying to keep you alive. And yeah. so that's why it stores those real negative, shameful memories mm. and they linger for years. Yeah. It's interesting that. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, like the amount of those that I have and, yeah, you still sort of go on the hamster wheel of drinking. And, you know, if you really sat down with notebook and pen, I'm sure you could remember a lot of positive things. It's just your brain has just chosen to put those probably mm. to the to the back of the... <laughs> yeah. Back of the cupboard. Yeah, um, go into the storage container. Yeah, that's it. Say. But um, oh, beautiful. Thank you very much, man. No problem. Well, this has been Last Drinks. 
I'm Will Hitchens. This is Mitchell Ford, and we'll see you in the next one.